everyone and welcome to our podcast. We are honored to have with us Dr. Ritika Valia, a consultant, aesthetic physician specializing in cosmetic skin and hair concerns. Dr. Ritika has dedicated over a decade to the field bringing expertise and a wealth of successful cases to her practice. Currently, Dr. Ritika practices at Skinwin Clinic in Jaipur and focuses on addressing a spectrum of cosmetic skin and hair issues. from pigmentation problems scars and uneven texture to hair related concerns like thinning and transplantation dr ritika's expertise spans a diverse range of aesthetic treatments dr ritika is here to share insights into a common concern many of us face pigmentation issues welcome to the podcast dr ritika thank you for giving me this opportunity Thank you, Dr. Ritika. Now uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. And uh, before we begin, uh, could you share your clinical journey and experience so far? Uh, so I've been um, in this journey of aesthetic since around ten years, and I've been uh, helping people looking best at any age, whether it comes to their hair, whether it comes to their skin, whether it is anti-aging procedures. So uh, I love how confident people become. Once they start looking better, and uh, that's how I entered the scene, and uh, that's how what I've been doing. So uh, today, uh, the our topic is uh, pigmentation, which is very common and the most common concern. So um, I love speaking about this topic and sharing my views on it. Great, Doctor Ritika. So let's begin. Uh, I want to understand how pigmentation affects various skin types. So could you provide an overview of how pigmentation issues manifest differently across uh, various skin types? Yeah, sure. See, uh, pigmentation basically is broadly classified into hyperpigmentation and hyperpigmentation. When skin is evenly toned, pigmented from all the sides, so this is the normal appearance of the skin. Any variation is um, considered an issue, which is called pigmentation issue. If the skin appears patchy or dark in certain place, we call it hyperpigmentation. And uh, when the pigmentation is deficient in certain areas, like when we see in the cases of vitiligo, it is called hypopigmentation. so this is in the broad terms how we understand pigmentation disorders yeah now uh, that we have a fundamental understanding let's delve into the factors contributing to uneven skin pigmentation so could you shed light on primary causes that uh, lead to these variations in skin tone yeah see broadly uh, we can classify uh, it into four categories first would be the strongest factor which is genetics genetics is um uh the the factor which affects the pigmentation uh to the father's extent uh because it determines the amount of melanin we will have melanin is the pigment in our body which gives color to our skin and hair so how much melanin a person has and what is the distribution of melanin is decided by the genetics of the body so this would be the factor which would be the most important one The second is your hormonal makeup. Any change in the hormonal setup of uh, a male or female uh, would uh, manifest into pigmentary changes. Like, uh, for example, after pregnancy, many females they develop uh, pigmentation on their cheeks, now uh, on their nose. So this is affected hormonally. So the second reason is the hormonal makeup. Uh, the third is sun exposure. this luckily is in our control and we will discuss this further uh so as the sun um is exposed our skin is exposed to sun the pigmentation darkens also in the case of hypopigmentation we use sun exposure to treat and develop pigment so sun exposure definitely affects our skin color and uh, the fourth one uh would be uh, the medications which we take There are many medications like antibiotics, oral contraceptive pills, which would adversely affect the color of the skin. So, primarily, these four factors are important in determining the pigmentation of the skin. Yeah, and now, uh, Doctor Ritika, let's shift our focus to diet. Uh, could you share uh, your expertise on how dietary choices can influence skin pigmentation? Definitely, in the long run, diet plays a very important role in skin pigmentation. 
uh, a healthy diet along with uh, good exercise would go a long way in keeping your skin healthy so for example if you want to discuss some specific dietary ingredients like fruits like citrus fruits uh, fruits like pomegranate so these uh, fruits would add to the vitamins and the minerals and um, for vegetables i would say sweet potato and carrots and all the green vegetables taken in right proportion will help your skin glow beautifully if taken regularly uh, included with other uh, carbohydrates and uh, fat sources so these are the important uh, dietary contributors yes thank you for that valuable information uh, dr ritika now uh, skin care is crucial especially for those dealing with pigmentation issues so could you share effective skin care practices for patients dealing with hyperpigmentation and hypopigmentation so a uh, skin care can be categorized into ctms so c stands for cleansing effective cleansing of the skin even if you are wearing makeup the whole day clean it properly okay cleansing plays a important role uh, make sure the cleanser is uh, mild not very aggressive okay and then comes toning t stands for toning toning uh, basically closes your pores and gives you a refined glass like texture so non alcoholic toner which suits your skin i would recommend that you use it daily then comes m that is moisturization moisturization is often uh, you know uh, taken for granted but this is the most crucial part in maintaining the health of the skin if the skin barrier is properly maintained with the use of moisturizer half the skin problems are already sorted and last s is sunscreen sunscreen is something which is mandatory for all ages for all weather so a good broad spectrum doctor recommended sunscreen should be something which you always have uh, in your skin care regime great and now talking about treatment part uh could you discuss the range of treatments available for pigmentation issues and provide insights into their effectiveness yeah sure see uh hypopigmentation per se is a medical issue so for that we have uh, you know medical treatments eczema laser puva chambers so that is something which a doctor will do for you now hyperpigmentation have has many cosmetic treatments also Uh, which provide localized faster results like for example if your skin is darkened uneven skin is there there is tanning so we can go for chemical peeling chemical peeling is a procedure which uh, when a peel is applied on your face and your skin starts peeling a bit that is exfoliating a bit it takes out the tanning and dead skin from your uh, face and it would give reveal a brighter look brighter skin so one procedure is this second would be laser procedures laser skin lightening where laser can penetrate deep into your skin and take care of stubborn pigmentation which chemical peel and you know the local creams cannot take care of laser if done safely uh through a doctor is a very good treatment and gives a long term resolution for your uh, pigmentation and a third is something uh, which has been very common which is called uh, glutathione therapy or antioxidant therapy where we administered the glutathione to iv line this leads to lightening of the entire body but this has to be taken according to your doctor's uh, recommendation like you have to come weekly or 10 days to the clinic and take avail the treatment this is also a very good treatment and the recent most advances spmu that is semi permanent makeup so sometimes with everything with all the treatments the pigmentation is stubborn and is not going so one can opt for semi permanent makeup for example pigmentation on lips can be very easily dealt with dark circles also can be very easily dealt with semi permanent makeup so but i would advise semi permanent makeup also is something which should be done through someone who is trained who is a medical practitioner so that will help you keep your skin safe so that you do not worsen the condition and slowly and gradually improve it. so these would be things which you can um opt for when it comes to the treatment fascinating insights dr ritika and now uh 
I I'm sure there are uh, misconceptions about pigmentation issues that you frequently encounter among patients. So could you throw light on yes. that? Yes. See, the most common one I encounter is that hyperpigmentation will resolve by itself. It never does because see, hyperpigmentation keeps accumulating, goes deeper, deeper, deeper into your layer and becomes very stubborn. So once you have tried all your home treatments and you know home serums and everything and it's not going so i would ask you asap you should meet a doctor or meet somebody who is experienced in this field and get treated so one misconception is this and the second one is that sunscreen is not required in winter the sunscreen is something which we require in every season because the uv a rays which cause darkening are also present in winters also in rainy season and cloudy season so uh, i would uh, recommend everybody to use a sunscreen and for that they should definitely consult somebody a doctor who would tell them which sunscreen suits them according to their skin type and they can use it regularly along even along with makeup if they want to so these two misconceptions i uh, really encountered very commonly in my practice Yeah thank you for clearing misconceptions about pigmentation issues Dr Ritika uh, it it of course hinders individuals effective skin care journey yes yeah so uh, moving ahead how important is early intervention in managing pigmentation problems and what are the potential outcomes of delayed treatment see uh, early intervention is very important because the problem would go deeper into the deeper layer for example a person has acne acne has resolved but there is still a pigmentation so you know uh, if a person he keeps sitting uh, apne aap theek ho jayega it will you know just go it would never happen the skin will keep getting damaged day by day even in case of acne if the acne is not treated uh, it's left to resolve by itself then either it will call hyperpigmentation or it would cause scars so it would be really difficult for the person and the treating physician to take care of the problem so i would insist one to uh, you know you should try something uh, about your home care like one week two weeks three weeks but that's enough if more than one month a person a problem is persisting you should definitely consult an expert as we wrap this insightful conversation dr ritika could you share your key takeaway message for our listeners so the t- key takeaway would be that uh, first of all take care of your health regular exercise and diet is very important come when it comes to skin and hair health and whenever there is a doubt definitely consult an expert do not go for self medication and do not uh, buy medicines randomly from the chemist go to a doctor take a uh, expert advice and then um, you can decide what to do but do not self medicate and do not sweat over the problem and always use sunscreen yeah uh, thank you dr ritika for explaining the complexities of pigmentation issues and offering valuable insights we appreciate your expertise in guiding our listeners towards healthier and more radiant skin thank you so much for joining thank you thanks and to our esteemed audience we also want to express our gratitude for joining us today before we say goodbye i encourage you to explore our med synapse platform it offers a unique opportunity to engage in enriching discussions connect with esteemed medical professionals and contribute to the progress of healthcare until we meet again take care and keep advancing in your medical journey i'm your host dr harshita signing off goodbye